Coming up, we take a look at the Nevada caucuses, and later, Riverfront Apartments are stirring up trouble with students. Iowa men's basketball is making their final push before the Big Ten tournament. I'll break down their win against Ohio State later in sports. A 20 degree jump in temperatures and a lot of sun for the weekend. More for you on this unusual weather in just a bit. All that and more coming up on this Friday morning edition of DITV News. Don't go anywhere. DITV News starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm John Chenoweth. With the Iowa and New Hampshire behind them, the Democratic presidential candidates are now focusing their attention on Nevada. According to an 8 News Now Emerson College poll, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders has taken a promising lead. Sanders is currently polling at 30.4% and is far ahead of all the other candidates. Mayor Pete Buttigieg is taking second place at 16.9% and former Vice President Joe Biden is trailing right behind on Buttigieg's tail at 16.1%. The Nevada caucuses will be especially important to see how the candidates are polling with the people of color. The results from the caucus may take longer to be released due to the Democrats' focus with accuracy. Tom Perez, chairman of the National Democratic Committee, does not want to repeat the mistakes of the Iowa caucus. Precinct caucuses will be starting at the 10 a.m. on February 22nd. More private student housing is coming to Iowa City, but many students have concerns. Plans are moving forward to build a pair of 15-story luxury apartment towers at 12 East Court Street. Before City Council passed seven-story height bonuses for the project, University of Iowa undergraduate and graduate student governments met with the council on February 11th. Representatives expressed concern over rent prices at the Riverfront Crossing development. Mayor Bruce Teague said the development's higher rent price would take pressure off the core neighborhood's rental market. The project is moving forward, but Iowa City Mayor Pro Tem Mazahir Salif said Iowa City needs to be more affordable for housing. I support, by the way, 12 West Court to be built, but my only, uh, you know, reason for supporting it to get like some kind of money to build affordable housing in Riverfront Crossing. Sali said that new developments are required to have 10% of their property be affordable for 10 years or face a fee that goes towards other affordable housing projects in the district. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development defines an affordable home as costing no more than 30% of the gross income on gross housing expenses. No, we are not doing enough as a city and we need to work hard so we can do affordable housing. Affordable housing is a crisis in this city. The apartment project is the largest private residential project in Iowa City history. Now, it's been a little cold out lately. Um, I haven't complained too much. Hopefully, I think it's supposed to warm up this weekend. We'll see, but let's toss it over to Cole and he'll tell us that. Yeah, thanks, John. We've got a big 20 degree jump in the temperatures and lots of sun this weekend. And so looking forward towards the week for weather, um, on Friday morning, we're going to be sitting at around 28 and then moving to Friday evening, we're going to be sitting at 31 as temperatures will be in the high 20s with lots of sun. Later this evening, tips will continue to rise into the low 30s as we have a clear night sky. Looking forward to the weekend, we've got some really nice weather coming up as we will hit 50 on Saturday before falling to only 31 on that night. On Sunday, we'll continue the trend as we stay in the low 50s with more sun before dropping down to 35 that evening. However, on Monday and Tuesday, we're looking for a little snow as we drop back down into the 40s and high 30s in the day and fall into the 20s and 30s during the evenings. Try to take advantage of this nice weather this weekend, Iowa City. Back to you, John. Thank you, Cole. After flooding damaged the building back in 2008, the Stanley Museum of Art is still in the process of reconstruction. Reporter Grace Aldrin tells us more. Last semester, construction started on the new University of Iowa Stanley Museum of Art. So I spoke with Lauren Lessing, the museum's director, to find out more. The original Stanley Museum, located on the west side of campus, was destroyed in the Iowa flood of 2008. Unfortunately, the Federal Emergency Agency was not able to provide the funds to replace the building because it wasn't technically destroyed. However, the museum was rendered unusable, so in the meantime, they were able to temporarily move their artwork into the Ritchie Ballroom in the Iowa Memorial Union. We finally were able to cut bait, 
with FEMA and realized that you know they were never going to pay for a building. Um, the university committed um, half of the fifty million dollar cost of the building and then tasked us with raising the other half. Right now, the new location is one fourth of the way through construction. Rod Cruzy is the lead architect, and he works um, for an architectural firm, BNIM. They're based in Kansas City and Des Moines, Iowa. The museum is expected to be finished by mid-year of 2022. With DITV News, I'm Grace Aldrin. Thanks, Grace. Annika Wahlberg, an up-and-coming Iowa art scene, did not start out wanting to be an artist. This senior found her way to an art major after taking art classes at the university. Her art focuses on portraits of people at parties, always with a hot pink background. She says, quote, I like to use colors that make you feel disoriented or like you're drunk, and I feel like hot pink is just a very jarring color that you don't expect to see, end quote. Wahlberg likes to make art that represents womanhood and art that's even funny. Even though she's relatively new to art, her enthusiasm shows and she hopes to one day work for a museum of art a residency. Now in sports, we're we'll be talking about basketball, so but you don't want to hear that from me. Let's toss it over to Maddie. Thanks, John. The Iowa men's basketball team the, took on number 25 ranked Ohio State, and they came into town last night to take on the Hawkeye men's basketball team. Our basketball team just came off a close win against the Golden Gophers. Iowa started out fast and led by as many as 19 points in the first half. Junior Luca Garza had a total of 23 points on the night, but that wasn't even the best part. Cordell Pemsel and Bakari Evelyn came off the bench and had a combined total of 24 points to help spark the Hawkeye offense. Iowa would go on to win 85 to 76. And that's the kind of team we have, and that's the kind of way that's the way we have to play. We just can't put it all on Garza and we can't. And that's not the team we have. You know, we wouldn't be, you know, sitting here with 19 wins if that was the case. The Hawks only have two home games left before they head to Indianapolis for the start of the Big Ten tournament. Along with getting the dub, the Hawkeye offense got a huge help in scoring from two players that haven't been talked about much this season. DITV sports reporter Dallas Jones has more on their performance. The Iowa offense exploded tonight for 85 points, even though they only played seven players because of injury. Cordell Pemsel added nine points and eight rebounds, and Bakari Evelyn scored a season-high 13 points. You know, I just felt more confident, like I said earlier in the week. I, I feel like my old self again, and um, I have the confidence to shoot the ball and, and know that it's going to go in. And um, when I'm doing that, I just feel like I help the team out a lot more. Those two were spectacular. I mean, Cordell and, and, and Bakari were, were phenomenal tonight. We don't win the game without them. And they, they did it at both ends, both of them. You know, Cordell's got eight rebounds, nine points. Uh, Bakari hitting threes, but driving the ball, making great decisions. You know, as someone I've, uh, you know, talked to, you know, I talked to him a lot. You know, he's a very, very good friend of mine. And, um, you know, he, he, he struggled with confidence this year throughout different points in the year, but now just to see him settling into his own, um, it's huge. Reporting from Carver Hawkeye Arena, this is Dallas Jones, DITV. With injuries coming left and right all year, the Hawks are no stranger to adversity. Hopefully, Iowa's bench will be able to carry them deep into the month of March. Now, that if that isn't enough Iowa basketball for you, don't worry. The women's team will go up against the Nittany Lions in Carver this weekend as they hope to extend their perfect home record to 14-0. John, back to you. Thank you, Maddie. Uh, that's all we have for you on this Friday morning edition of DITV News. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all of your latest news between Monday and Friday. If that isn't enough of the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out our print edition of the news, which is on stands now. For DITV News, I'm John Chenoweth. Have a great day, Iowa City.